Hello guys, a warm welcome to my IT class. We are going through a series of C++ tutorials. In this video, I will be discussing C++ functions. So before we go into C++ functions, I will discuss one a simple concept related to functions. If that concept is clear to us, we will have a clear understanding of C++ functions and that is concept of local variables and global variables. This understanding is very much important to know why we pass parameters to functions, why we return values from functions, all that. So let me first define what is a local variable. A local variable is one which is defined or declared in a particular scope. So in programming, we define scope with the help of these two curly braces. So this is an opening brace and this is a closing brace. This we call it as a block. It is a block. So any variable created in such a block will remain local to that block. So that is the meaning of local variable. So any what is the characteristic of local variable? the scope will be local to the block in which it is created and second it has life as long as the control is inside this block as long as the control is inside this block it will be alive in memory once the control is out say the control is out of this block then the the variable will be destroyed from memory it is no more available it is no more accessible so this is a point you are supposed to understand as long as the variable is inside this block we can access it and we can use it once the control comes out of it we cannot access so anything declared in this block say i have a block here now this is a block i will create a variable int a now the variable is accessible only within this block where up to what this closing brace is there that is the boundary of it outside this block a is not at all accessible so if you want to access or if you want the value of a then there are different ways through which we need to access it and we have to modify it so just remember now what is the point you are supposed to remember here is a local variable is one which is created inside a block like this and the scope the visibility will be the block itself that's why we say it is a local to the block and the life is also till the control exists in the block once the control exits the block the variable is also destroyed from memory and the default initial value of local variables is garbage value they are called stack variables because they reside in stack memory this is the this much information is in, enough for us for local variables and now the opposite is a global so any variable declared global variables any variable declared outside outside a block say now we are not we are not restricting it to be inside somewhere outside anywhere in any part of the program it is created but it is somewhere outside say in b now b is not in the block in any block whereas in a it is in a block if you take another variable float p so p is also inside a block a and p are local whereas b is not in any particular block it is outside a block so it will become a global so the characteristic of global variable is that it is accessible from any part of the program as the name tells global the accessibility is from any part visibility is everywhere the variable is accessible everywhere and the life is as long as the program control uh, uh, is will not come to end of the program that is till the end of program the life of global variable exists 
whereas the life of local is only the block once the control exits the block the life of local variable is over this is a very important point you are supposed to remember for understanding function concept now let's go to function just remember now what is a local variable that is what i want to use in uh, function concept so now let's begin our discussion with local variable So let's discuss C++ functions now. We are ready to take this concept. What is a function basically? A function is a sub part of the program. Why we write functions that I let you know. Just let me first define a function. What it is, it is basically a sub program or you can say it is a part of the program it is a sub program or part of the program why we write this sub program or part of the program why what is the need we write this sub program or part of the program to perform a particular to perform a particular set to perform a particular set of instructions or particular set of tasks you can say a, a function is a sub program or a part of the program defined to perform a particular set of task or particular task you can say that is the meaning of a function here in programming context now if you look at this paint now i have a lot of, of functions here now so this will draw a rectangle this is one function this will draw a circle this is one function this will draw a line it's a line function internally it is a function itself so it's a line function it's a rectangle function it's a circle function whenever you are in need you will just drag and draw it so now in program what we do Whenever there is a need, we just call it. We define in one place and we call. As many times we want, with that many times we can call it. Why we define functions? Why we use functions? Because the modern day languages, they support modular programming concept. So modular programming concept is what? So this is a one program. This is one big program I have. Say abc is a program or application this is a one big thing big uh, program you can say big task you can say so as a whole it is very difficult for me to manage as a whole it's very difficult for me to test it debug it manage it so these are all the difficulties i face so for that what i do i divide it into small number of chunks small number of blocks like this i'll divide so that breaking of this big program into smaller tasks is called modular programming so function concept supports modular through functions we implement modular programming say in this program now somewhere uh, something is getting repeated this is a task this is a task x and again here also the task x is getting repeated here also the task is getting repeated so now you are repeating the code and it is not at the same place if it were at the same place you would have used a loop but it is at different places the repetition is taking place this is called as a redundancy of code so you can avoid redundancy of code and you can write only once this particular task you can write only once and you can call that say this is this is task X. This is a task X. Now what you do here? You will be calling it. In ABC, the ABC application now, just it will call the task X. Whenever there is a need, it will call the task X. So this is how your program got reduced. 
this is a call this is a call to x and this is a call to the function x this is a call to function x and this is what it's a definition definition of the task s this is how the basic uh, thing here is what redundancy we avoid and we define once and as many times we can we are interested or we need that many times we can call the function so i uh, guess you got an idea why we need to define functions let us now see how to define a function in c++ so what is the structure for it what is the structure to define a c++ function the language gives you a structure that way you have to follow now if i ask you come on guys define uh, write a program c++ program to find a sum of two numbers then how you will say you will start defining int then you say main and this is what the way you define here you will write the code read two numbers and then find sum so this is what you are already you knowing how to define a function it means main is a function main is a user defined function main is user defined function it is so we need to know how to define user defined function there is another set of functions which are built in functions Built-in functions are those which are provided by the system, like square root function, power function, other. If you are in, if you studied C, printf, scanf, clear screen, those are all provided by the system. Library functions, exit function, then uh, we have string-related functions. They are all built-in functions. What user-defined functions are? The user will define. So how the user will define? this is the way he has to use so he has to specify the return type of the function and the function name since main is given by uh, the system we are using main we cannot change it but it is a user defined the main is name is given by system but the definition is given by user that's why it is a user defined function so now we'll see how we can define any other function say if you are interested in some different function again what you have to do you have to mention the return type say i want to display a message welcome message so wide is the return type display i'll explain you what is that wide so here this is the body we call c out c out hello welcome to c++ functions so this is our first uh, function we are writing so the function name is what here the function name is display what is the return type so when here the main function is returning a zero value normally the main function returns zero for proper execution if the program is terminated correctly then a zero will be returned if there is any issue any problem if abrupt termination takes place then it returns a non zero value this is how the convention is there so here you are returning zero that's why it is an integer the return type of main is integer but display as such it is not having any return statement here there is no return statement like this there is no return statement here that's why we are not returning any value when we don't return any value that time we specify the return type as wide and we can this is just a definition of display and we can call this display in main like this display so this is a, a call this is a function call and this is function definition we call so this term illology is important this is a definition this is a call so the definition is appearing after the call this is a call after the call the definition is appearing whenever the definition whenever your definition appears after the call then you must declare the function 
you must provide the prototype of the function the prototype of the function is the function header itself say like this now this is a function header wide display this is a function header same thing we'll declare as a function here this is a function declaration we call so it is a function declaration this is how we have three things associated with a function function declaration function call and function definition why we need to declare a function because your definition is appearing after the call the call appears first here this is the call so when the compiler encounters this call if there is no uh, declaration given then it raises an issue what is this display it uh, that is not knowing it so we are defining it afterwards that's why we need to give declaration first if you provide the definition first then there is no need of declaration because the definition itself introduces to the compiler that there is a function called display when the call is encountered there is no issue because display uh, definition has already compiled and that is known to compiler this is how the three things function definition function call and function declaration are associated with the function concept so here we'll conclude our session and the takeaways are for today's session we discussed local variable global variable a local is one which is created inside a block like this is a main main is a block here we can create it and display display is a block if anything is created it will be local the application of this i'll demonstrate you in the next video how when we pass variables and when we return it so here then we uh, discussed uh, what is a function and then what is the structure of a function the structure of a function is what it uh, uh, need to specify the return type function name and argument list will be there right now we are not passing any argument here nothing we have listed and then the function body will appear i hope uh, this will clear your function concept we have started just now so in our next video we'll see how we can pass parameters to function and how we can make it uh, return values to the calling function and what are the different ways of calling a function that also we'll discuss hope uh, you enjoyed the session and uh, if you are first time visiting my website this one uh, channel please do subscribe and if you like it please share thank you so much for watching we'll conclude here thank you